So I was looking out here this morning before class at all, all you monks and the nuns going to class and this whole building and this whole project. It's like, it's amazing because just 10 or 12 years ago there was nothing. And now, now this, this project has just taken on its own life. The current modern education system uh, has so much uh, has so much things that it lacks, like uh, moral discipline and so on. So uh, we really need to have a, a change in that, uh, a change uh, which can be productive for our future generations. And to do that, uh, I think that it is very much essential that we integrate um, the ancient Indian knowledge into. Uh, uh, the modern education system. It's kind of magic because His Holiness just had this vision and then people from all over the world like Geshe La, Geshe La Tsong, Tibetans and people like Tom, people from all over the world have come and made this His Holiness vision, this reality. This experience just opened my eyes to how much fun it is to interact with students, the monks, who were completely into where, what they were doing, why they were there, and uh, having fun learning. Everybody was involved, and it just completely turned me on to teaching. Some of them were very much uh, interested and intrigued in the scientific studies, because uh, uh, although they have learned so much from Buddhist philosophy, um, I think science shows something uh, much more like uh, tangible, you know, in terms of uh, proving things through uh, scientific methods and through um, empirical da data and so on. So I think uh, this is something very much new and something very much needed in the uh, 21st century. Just by itself, it's kind of amazing, right? Because your, your curriculum and your learning really hadn't changed that much in 600 years, and here His Holiness invites us in and to, to rethink the way you're learning and what you're learning. Well, I've been involved with ETSI from the very beginning for over 10 years, and at the beginning I just kind of got involved because it sounded kind of cool, the Dalai Lama and monks, I didn't really know much. But I'd have to say that it's changed dramatically the way I think about learning, the way I think about teaching, the way I think about communicating across cultures, because although this is a very dramatic example, you know, big, tall, white American scientists talking to monks, cross-legged, it's not really that different than what I do every day in America, which is talk to people from all over the world, students from Asia and Africa and all different cultures. So it's really given me insight into how to think about teaching and think about people coming from different worldviews uh, and how they're learning in relationship to what I know. I heard that the idea was that it was a hundred year project. And so this year I thought that that was coming in, I thought that that was unattainable. But then this year coming in I've seen how much in just two years the monks have matured uh, scientifically, the sophistication of their questions. Not only this is now the fifth year uh, of the program, these f the fifth year students that I'm teaching, not only is it the fifth year students who are much more sophisticated, but the third year students, the second year students, all up and down. So I think that the students are talking to each other and the whole cohort of students are more sophisticated. The project has become, because it's unique, it's become an example for many other people, many other cultures, many other educators, many other scientists to see what can be done to learn and share ideas and knowledge across very different cultures. So you should know that you're part of a very important experiment that a lot of people around the world are watching. If we can implement those uh, uh, knowledge from uh, Buddhist science and Buddhist philosophy, then we can create a collaboration 
of a knowledge which can uh, have a very positive outcome, although uh, the outcome may not uh, appear immediately, in the long run, uh, as a student, I'm very much uh, confident that there will be uh, great results and uh, great uh, progress. And I see it as a contribution to uh, the future generations and uh, uh, humanity as a whole. So His Holiness talks about uh, ETSI as a 100-year project. Um, and there's been many times in the last 10 years where we thought the project was just going to die out, but always through His Holiness and through the community, it's kept going. And now, with this science center here at Drepong and science centers at the other monasteries, it's clearly here to stay. And it's on the Geshe exams for the first time this summer. So I think the next phase is sustaining it and growing it. And we've built a cohort of Mm, 24 to 30 monks who are taking the leadership, they're teaching, they're developing science centers, we have textbooks, we have videos, we're developing a whole new vocabulary, dictionary. So I think the next step is taking all those pieces and figuring out the best way to integrate them and, and sustain them for the decades to come. Uh, ancient Indian uh, knowledge focuses much more on the more subtle level, like uh, uh, on the deeper, the mental level, not just on the physical attributes, not just on the uh, external objects, but more on the, uh, the, the mental level, the spiritual level, the inner value, the level of the inner values. So that is where I think there is a slight difference. But ultimately, I think, you know, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to uh, collaborate them and then find a perfect approach, uh, a perfect way uh, to lead a positive life, to lead the right life. I think uh, that is what we are trying to accomplish here. Uh, Your Holiness, thank you for envisioning this project, the Emory Tibet Science Initiative. It has deeply changed us and the lives of many monks and nuns and will continue to do so for generations. We have changed the ways we think about teaching learning, science, Buddhism, and life. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. The book tells our story of our lives and the kind of culmination of this project and how it's changed us and how we think about uh, each other's cultures and about teaching and learning. So that was one of the best things I've 